Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I want to show you how to do a very basic toast message using just vanilla JavaScript and CSS. You can see here I've got this example. If I click, you get this little message here that's often called a toast message. I can also get it from here where I click this and now it says something else. Items removed from your cart. This whole thing is actually a project that I live streamed building out and uh, I don't think that was actually part of the spec, but I've just kept playing with it and adding extra things. I haven't actually done anything with the uh, desktop version yet. I don't think I haven't finished that up. Uh, but this is just a quick reminder that if you're watching any of my videos, especially my larger projects, I almost always have a community improvements branch on GitHub where you can fork it and then do your own pull requests and we can kind of build stuff out together. Especially if you see something that you're like, hey, that's really not the right way to do something or I would do it differently or here's an extra feature you could add. I'm always in for basically taking those community improvements branches and kind of turning them up to 11. All right, so you can help me out with that if you want to. Uh, but for now, what I'm gonna do is just show you how to do this and I've got this code pin. That's what we're gonna be working on. You can come in here and click any of these. They give you different messages and you can see there's also different colors. You can even change the time so some of these have longer timings than others when they go away. And that's what we're going to be building out today with just vanilla JavaScript. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so I've got kind of the bare bones of this set out. And you can see I've got a style sheet, a um, JavaScript right here, and then just some really basic HTML. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually kind of mimic what we're going to be adding in JavaScript so that we can style it and kind of get it ready. And then we'll wor worry about the functionality of actually building out the JavaScript site. So I'm gonna come in here and just temporarily have something called a toast container. And inside here, we're gonna have uh, actually a paragraph with the class of toast on it. It'll say like, hi, I'm toast. Do we have bread? Bread? There we go. All right, <laughs> hi, I'm toast. So we got that ready. Um, now let's go ahead and style it. And I've got just some kind of prep code and I'll include all this in there, but basically it's just colors, uh, the buttons themselves, kind of how they move in and out like this when you hover over them. Uh, all that is kind of set out to start with. So what we do need to do though, is go ahead and grab our coast toast container here. We need this to be a position of fixed so that it pulls basically out of the flow of the document. And then I do want the top for it to be one rem off the top and the right, we're going to do just a little bit more than that 1.5 rem. Now, because it's actually got a child in there, that toast, and there might be more children afterwards. I actually also want this to have to be a grid parent. So I'm going to say display of grid and then justify items end. If you don't know how to use grid, I've actually done a tutorial series where I walk you through with real life examples, how to actually build out a site with grid. But basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, Hey, any of the children I have, I want to be all the way pushed here to the block end of it. So all the way over on the right here and in, in, uh, in my browser. Now, finally, I want a gap of 1.5 rem. Now, what that's going to do is if I were to add multiple toast messages like this, it will stack them all out um, 1.5 um, rem apart. All right, back here, We've got just, I think, just two things left to do. First of all, we have a toast itself. That's the paragraph. And here we want the font size to be 1.5 rem. And then I do want the font weight to be bold. And I, I'm going to just go ahead and make sure I set the line height to one. We're never going to have a really long message. And I just want to make sure that all the padding and all that is controlling exactly how it looks. So I'll say padding 0.5m and 1m. And then finally, I actually am going to have a little animation. Uh, just so we can kind of see the background color here, let's go ahead and do like, and I'll just do something like blue, and there you go. That's painful to look at. Let's do like light blue. Is that a thing? Okay, there we go. All right, now, the last thing we need to do is actually we're going to animate this using keyframes. And the reason I'm going to do keyframes is because it's easy to basically add them on and then do an event listener based off of when that animation ends. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write it up here. We're going to say animation. We're, we'll call this uh, toasted. How's that sound? Uh, 3000 uh, milliseconds. So three seconds is kind of the default. And then I do want a cubic Bezier curve. And let's see, let's, we've got some samples here that we can choose from. Uh, I don't know, let's do something like that. I just think it makes it look more realistic when you have something that's not just kind of eased. All right, we're gonna set it to forwards, uh, not forward, forwards like that. So the last thing we need to do then is to go ahead and write that keyframe. So I'll say keyframes. And what do we call on this thing? Toast it. All right, so there we go, toast it. Uh, and at zero and at 100%, I want them to both have the same state. And that would be, I want their transform to be a translate, translate uh, Y. And this is gonna be negative 150%. And then I'll have their opacity to be zero. So they're gonna start up kind of behind everything and slide down. And the same thing kind of coming the other way. 
and you'll see that this is yelling at me. This needs to be 0%, and I think that should work. So now they're all up above. Next, at 10% and at 90%, I want it to be transform. Actually, let's just copy this down so you're not having to watch me type that all again. We're going to put this opacity to 1 and the translate uh, to 0. You can see when I do that, they kind of all slide in, and then they all slide out. Now what's happening here is it's actually setting this duration. This is going to be like a default duration for us. And this default here, it's setting it to come in really quick. So whatever one-tenth of uh, three seconds is. So I, what is that? 300 milliseconds. It's going to jump in. It's going to wait there until there's only 300 milliseconds left in those three seconds, and then it will jump out. So that's why we've set it off uh, like this. So if I save it again, it should do it all over again. And there we go. Okay, so we got it set. Now the last thing we need to do is actually write all this in JavaScript. So we want to control the functionality based off when we click these things. Now if I come back over here, you're going to see that, uh, number one, let's get rid of all this. We can remember what that looks like. Uh, we've got three classes here. We've got a success class, a warning class, and an info class. So we're going to go ahead and grab those. And I, I've just got this little pasteboard. I've done a video before on the one I use. It's called Pastebot, if you're interested. But what we're going to do is go ahead and say we want our success here to be equal to document dot query selector. And we're just going to grab the class here of success. And then I'll copy this down, grab both of those with command D, and then replace that with warning, copy them down again, and replace those uh, with info. All right, so we've got those buttons. Now what I want to do is loop through each of those. Now, if I knew for a fact that I would only ever be invoking this with buttons, I would probably just give them all a class of like toast button or something. Um, but sometimes you have buttons that are activating it. Other times it's other things in your code, um, like for instance, just some change of state or something like that. So right now I'm just going to declare all three of these things and we'll treat them differently depending on which one they've clicked. Now, the very first thing I need to do is to actually insert our toast container into the DOM. Now, the reason I'm kind of controlling it all with JavaScript is so that way you can just basically append this JavaScript to any document or import it if you're using like a, another module that needs this. And the document itself will take care of getting everything ready on the page. Now, I'm going to need my functions inside of here to have access to that. So I'm going to go ahead and declare it up top here with a let. So we'll call it toast container, but I actually am needing to initialize it. So we're going to say init toast like this. And then inside here, I'll say document.body.insert uh, adjacent HTML, because it's just going to be an HTML string. And there's two things we need to give this. First of all, a position. So we're going to say after begin here. So right after the initial body tag, I want to insert some HTML. What's the HTML I want to insert? Well, I'm going to go ahead and add it right here. It's what we already had, a div with a class of toast container, like that, and then nothing inside of here. All right, so I've got that ready. So as soon as this document loads, automatically I'm going to go ahead and add that toast container so it's ready whenever I need a toast to be added to the page. Now, of course, I need to run this function for that to work. So I could either come down here and say init, uh, init toast like that and just run it. And then if I were to open this up over here, you should be able to see, let's see, console elements, toast container. There it is. So it's on the page now. So that's one way to do it. Uh, another way to do it would be to make it an immediately invoked function. And that way, right here, you can see uh, it runs itself immediately and it's on the page. So I'm going to leave it like that for now. Uh, but I do want access to this in my other functions, this toast container. Because I can't access it in the DOM until it's in the DOM. Now afterwards, I need to update my variable up here, toast container, to be equal to document.query selector. And now that it's on the page, I'm just going to select the class I just added uh, of what was it, toast container. Okay, cool. So I've got access to that now. And now all I have to do is write a function that will basically add a toast. So that's what we're going to do now. So let's come up here and I'm going to add a function. We're going to call this uh, generate toast. And then it's going to take in several things. I'm going to have a message, a background color that's possible, a color of the text, a length that I want. And so all of those I may or may not want to add. And typically, whenever you have multiple things that you may or may not want to add, you don't want to add them like this. You don't want to do like message, uh, color, background, because if you forget one of these, then it basically messes up your whole thing. Or if you put them in the wrong order, it messes up your whole function. So instead, what I'm going to do is just add an object here. Adding it as an object gives you more flexibility when you're passing in arguments to this generate toast function. 
So I am gonna have a message. I'm also gonna have a background here and I'm gonna give it a default so that I, if I don't get something from the user, it's gonna use this 00214D. So that's just a hex color for like a dark blue. And then for a color here, again, I'm gonna give it a default. Oops, and this needs to be a comma. And again, I'm gonna have this and this is gonna be a really light color, just slightly off white. And then for length, my default is gonna be the same default I actually set in my CSS, but we'll just do the 300 milliseconds. All right, so we've got that set. Now let's actually write the function. So now that I already know I'm gonna have my toast container on the page, I can just grab the toast container. And since I actually updated the variable down here to the div itself, to the actual DOM element, now I can just say insert uh, adjacent HTML. And again, I'm gonna say before end. And then in here, I'm gonna go ahead and add in back ticks uh, multiple things here. So I want the paragraph with the class of toast. And the first thing I need to add, obviously, is the message itself. Now that I'm in back text, I can just add message directly in here like this. And I think the easiest thing for actually styling this is gonna to be to actually add everything else in a style tag, because these are all gonna be uh, CSS, basically. And so I'm gonna say style. We'll start with background color, and I'm gonna add my background here. And then we'll do color, and that will be equal to the color that I passed in. And then finally, I need to add my animation duration. Now that's what's already set in my CSS to the 3000 milliseconds, but I may want to change that. And so this will allow me to override that since it's an inline style. And here I'm going to set this to my length. Now you might wonder, why don't I just add a bunch of classes and then decide which class to add? But this basically cleans up the CSS and especially for something that's only going to be on the page for just a couple seconds, uh, I'd rather just do it with the JavaScript here. So you can see here, I've got all this. If, you, if that makes a little more sense, I'll space it out here. Uh, I've got the paragraph itself right here with the class of toast. These are my different style properties and I do need to, let's see, close this off uh, with a closing quotation mark here. And then the message itself is in there and that's the paragraph tag. So whatever I pass in now, I can pass in a message, color, length, background, all that, and it's just gonna dump it directly into the HTML. So let's go ahead and come over this way and let's add something uh, so that we can see it kind of populate. So I'm gonna grab my success button first of all, and I'll just add an event listener here. The event listener is gonna be a click. Whenever that click is fired, I want it to run that generate toast function. And inside here, I'm gonna pass out a bunch of things. So I've got my message and I can do stuff like, uh, let's see, do I have like a pound it something? There we go. Uh, you, you got this kid, <laughs> all right, there we go. And let's see, pound it again. All right, so I've got a message here. I also wanna pa pass in a background and I'm gonna go ahead and just copy the rest of this in that I have in the code pin, just so you don't have to watch me type stuff. And let's save that. Now, if I click the success, I should get, you got this kid and I do, which is cool. Now here's the thing, it's actually still in the DOM. In fact, you can see it, it's just hanging out right there. There's the toast container and the toast is still there. So if I were to click it again, I get another one, but now you see it's further down and then I get another one and then I get another one. So uh, that's not exactly what we want. We wanna find a way to remove these as soon as they're done. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but I think probably the easiest for now is just gonna to be to go ahead and grab that toast each time and attach an event listener itself on the paragraph that we just dumped into the DOM. All right, so let's come back over here. And what we need to do is grab reference to the actual toast itself. So I'm gonna say const toast equals toast container dot last element child. That means each time I'm adding a new toast, I'm grabbing reference to it with this variable toast. What I can do now is say toast dot add event listener. And this time we're listening for uh, animation end. So that's the event we're listening for. As soon as that animation ends, what I wanna do is I wanna say toast dot remove. So let's save that and jump back over this way, click submit, and let's watch down here. As soon as the animation removes, it's gone. All right, just like that, one after the other, I can add them. And as they move, they'll all slide up and you can see they're just slowly being removed every time the animation ends. All right, so that leaves just one final thing. Let's go ahead and add a bunch of other ones for the warning message and for agreeing to terms. And I'll go ahead and paste this in so you don't have to watch me do this. But you can see I've done the exact same thing, except this one I didn't actually pass a length in. I just passed in these. Same thing down here. And you can see up here I actually passed in a really long time. So we could change this even and add another one down here. Maybe we add like 8,000 milliseconds, so eight seconds on the info one. That means if I click on this delete, it's gonna be pretty brief and then it will leave after three seconds. 
this one will last a long time, this one will last forever, and then you can see that even as I stack these up, sometimes they get removed in kind of a different order than what I pass them in at. Now looking at that, that doesn't look like it's worked, so let's come back over here and kind of troubleshoot. And I think I see the problem, I don't actually have a semicolon here, so let's try that again. And now that one comes in, this one should be pretty quick, and that one should take a long time. Okay, so there you go. Now you see they're actually coming in at different speeds and leaving at different speeds. All right, and now they all kind of head out. Now the other thing I could do just as kind of one final step, and again, this is a very basic idea of a toast, but what I could do is actually grab all of this CSS that applies just to the toast and insert it as well when I insert the actual DOM itself, the DOM container, toast container. What that would look like is I would come over here and not only would I initiate uh, the toast container, but I'd actually add a style tag in here as well. And inside the style tag, I would just add all that code that applies only to those. Um, one other step you might want to do that I'll leave to you if you want to um, is you could also add, um, let's see, data attributes on each of these buttons so that you wouldn't have to pass this stuff in. Let's say you had a message data attribute on the submit button. It could just be something like this. Message is now going to be equal to e.current uh, target dot data set dot message or something like that and that way you could actually pass in a message here on the submit button let's do that real quick uh, so let's say data dash message equals to like yo yo or something and now we click and now it should pull that in let's see on our toast and I'm going to need to pass in the e itself so it actually has reference to it and there we go yo yo for that one and this one just says you sure about it but what you could do then is if you knew all your buttons were going to have this, just add data attributes to all of them for the color, for the background, for all that kind of stuff. And then when you click it, you can just grab all of that from the thing that was clicked and update uh, the toast thing. And then you just would have one function here rather than calling them for each of these individually. All right, well, I promise to keep it simple and I've already started adding stuff. So you can add whatever you want. Go ahead and fork that code pen. And if you have other things you would do differently, let me know in the comments as well. And I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.